Welcome back to the Dead Collection Diaries. In today's video, I'm debating whether or not I wanted to cover this particular topic, and I've sort of gone back and forth, and I felt like it's, you know, with what we do here, like it'd be daft not to, to have a say and not to put my, my thoughts and feelings across. So we're gonna be talking about the open letter that came out last week uh, from Elizabeth Dunn, the current information commissioner, and what that potentially means um, for UK regulation of data protection here, uh, obviously here in the UK. As always, if you find these videos useful, if you're new to the channel especially, please do make sure um, that you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button as well. It really just helps us to uh, teach the YouTube algorithm that this stuff is interesting and people are interested in it and it just allows us to get information out to more people. But as always, without any more waffle, let's just get on with what we're here to talk about. So last week we were greeted with the news via an open letter that Elizabeth Denham, the current UK Information Commissioner, is looking potentially to end her tenure as a UK Commissioner on July 2021. And the first thing to point out here is that the commissioners here in the UK that are appointed by DCMS actually only have a five-year tenure anyway. So it's not like she's leaving early, it's not like she's uh, walking away from her post, it is the end of her tenure. The second thing that's worth pointing out here is that in the letter she describes um, the work that she's done and will continue to do up until July 2021 when her current tenure comes to an end. She didn't actually state that she was no longer going to stay as the commissioner or that she didn't want to be nominated to stay on as commissioner so she may well choose to stay on for another five years. That is not yet clear so we don't have an answer for that. I wanted to cover this off in particular is because this has sparked quite a lot of debate within the community about whether or not in these five years the Commissioner has even been effective as a regulator and whether or not A, she should stay and carry on and do another five years, is there going to be any good to come out of it, or would we have a new Commissioner and what benefit would that new Commissioner bring? And there's been sort of two schools of thoughts here. There's been the one school of thoughts that states very clearly that actually she was a very successful commissioner over in Canada. She had a lot of success. Um, she had a lot of impact over there. She did a lot of great work. So to say that she's ineffective here may be um, an unfair attack on her personally. And maybe she's been constrained by government, constrained by DCMS as to what she can and can't focus on and what she can and can't take enforcement action against. The other side of the fence, you have every, the people that are saying that by not carrying out effective enforcement under the regulation and not being uh, visible enough, shall we say, and not issuing fines in an appropriate fashion, that she has failed in her attempts to be a commissioner by failing to effectively enforce the regulation. Now, I kind of see the both sides of this, this coin. I see the work that's been done in the background and, and it is talked about in the open letters so there's obviously been a lot of guidance issued around AI there's been codes of practice issued around um, children being online and what's appropriate and what's not and how that can be managed they've done a lot of work around um, the accountability principle and they've now released a, a framework and a structure for that and they've also done a lot of work in my eyes to help drive the message through to SMEs now for me personally if you go back five years to when Elizabeth Denham started, to when Christopher Graham ended, I truly believe that there is a much more um, in-depth understanding out in the world of what especially GDPR means, but why the data protection means for businesses and organisations within the UK. I think there is a better mindset, um, there is a better understanding of of how to implement those activities and, and what it means for small and medium businesses, which in the main is where this kind of guidance is possibly more important because big businesses have a lot of information, but smaller businesses can make a mess of things a lot, lot quicker. And also small businesses can still have access to huge amounts of information. So I think they have succeeded in the one sense that they have created um, a wider view, and they've made 
people much more aware of what their obligations are and also what individual rights are. So making it much clearer to people out in the world what rights they have under the GDPR. Information Commission in the ICO as a whole has always been constrained by budgetary requirements. The amount of money they get from the DCMS and from the government to be able to carry out the things that they want to do. The second thing that they were really, really hit by was obviously when the GDPR came into force, all of their talented, knowledgeable, experienced staff were consumed by the public sector. They could not keep up with the pace, they could not keep up with the salary requirements. And to be honest, they just lost a lot of knowledge and a lot of very experienced staff. They then also had the challenge that they had a lot more um, to, to regulate. You know, there was a, a much more easy to use regulation that, that commanded much more interaction with organisations. So you put those two things together and I think that's created some real challenges. Now, I don't think that matters whether that's information, um, sorry, the Information Commissioner from Elizabeth Denham's perspective or anybody that comes in afterwards. I think those challenges are still going to remain. I see the other side of the fence though, I see the issues around the BA and Marriott fines, huge fines that are potentially going to be issued, fines that were then appealed and fines we are still waiting for um, more information on. I believe that information is supposed to come out today because the appeals process should end today. Those were only ever notices of intent, so there were never actual fines issued. So to this date, those fines have not been issued, but lots of other fines have been issued primarily around the privacy and electronic communications regulations, which tends to look at um, telesales and cold calling and those kind of activities, which actually, for me again, is a very good area to focus because we're talking about vulnerable people, we're talking about inappropriately selling people um, pension products, uh, right the way down to, to double glazing and charity scams, which affects the old and the vulnerable and people that do need to be protected from these kind of organisations. So I do think that kind of regulation has been very effective and has worked very well. I am struggling with this one, to be honest, because I have previously done videos on whether or not I think the, the Commissioner has been effective or I think the ICO has been effective. But I've also stated in those videos that actually I do think it's a lot down to, to budget and resource and a, you know, not necessarily a desire to be able to do things, but having the skills available to be able to tackle those things. If you want to take on BA and you want to take on Marriott in the courts, you are going to need to be lawyered up. You, know, you are going to need the best people that you can possibly get your hands on. And that's exactly who the BA, who BA and Marriott are going to have access to. And it's not who a public sector government funded organisation is going to have access to. So yes, it's massively frustrating, but at the same time, I do feel like you have to pick your battles and sometimes there are battles that you know that you're not going to win and it just isn't worth the money. So actually putting that money into smaller organisations and providing guidance and assistance and support to other organisations does seem like a better use of the money on the face of it but obviously it doesn't necessarily grab the headlines and the attentions. Do I think the ICO has been effective? Possibly not completely. Do I think they've done a good job within the confines and the constraints and the budget and the skill set that they have? Personally, I think so. I still refer to the Information Commissioner's website for information, guidance, hints, tips, tools that I can use to help support my clients and help my clients and the clients here at iStorm just better understand their obligations. And that information is useful and it is beneficial and I know it's used by other uh, DPOs and other DPO support services as well. So there is a use to that and the website is useful and, info and informative. So I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. But I do feel that there needs to be a bit of a balance in the arguments going on online, and I'm hoping that this has kind of provided that balance. Anyway, I'd be massively interested to, to, to know what you think below. If you're here in the UK, if you've ever dealt with the Commissioner um, or, the regu or the ICO as a regulator, how do you find them? How effective do you find them? Do you think they've done a good job? Do you think they could do anything better? I'd be really interested to know your thoughts um, down below in the comments. 
And obviously, as soon as we know more about what Elizabeth is going to be doing, we'll be back here and we'll let you know what we find out. But for now, thank you very much for watching. As I said before, if you find these videos useful, please do hit the like button and obviously subscribe to the channel as well. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much.